What is going on my peeps, your boy Versatile is back with another video, back to discuss Android 10 One UI 2.1 on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6, the T-Mobile variant or T-Mobile version. Yes, I know that Verizon seems like they had kind of forewent the 2.1 for 2.0 and then I think it was a separate update. So let me know down in the comments below if those of Verizon actually got the 2.1 update. But for T-Mobile's version, we got 2.1. So a lot of the features that you're gonna see on here are features that we've already seen on the Galaxy S20. But how does it look on the tablet? Well, before we get into that, make sure you guys ignite that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that way you stay informed when I drop videos. Now, let's get into the video. And the first thing we're gonna talk about here is what you guys see up here. Google's Play System updates is now integrated into the software so Google can send separate updates that don't require the carrier or OEM to have to send updates. And that's uh, nice. We actually kind of are now starting to see some of that fragmentation take place in terms of software updates for Android devices. The other biggest thing that comes with Android 10, of course, is dark mode. But for the sake of this video, I'm doing it in light mode so that way you guys can see things a little bit better. In dark mode spans Gmail, it spans Samsung's apps, even the Samsung members app is now dark mode. So there's a lot of little fine touches there. Uh, before we actually get into the tablet form in Samsung DeX, just to mention it because I haven't really found anything else too new. Um, you know, the ability to actually pin apps in on the left or right side of the screen or full screen the app via just dragging the app window <clears throat> to either side or to the top of the of the display will you know handle the app so now you don't have to just use you know keyboard commands if you have the case cover or a keyboard for the tablet you can now drag and pin so those are the things that i've noticed in terms of samsung decks and along with that i guess you could say the same thing that i've seen in there along with my files is it's just more of a cleaner aesthetic a little more square edges i guess you could say but it also feels a little more like uniform so as you guys can see here it feels more spacious uh in terms of how everything laid out here and then outside of that I mean, that's pretty much across all apps you know you just uh, especially especially samsung's apps you just feel that 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 spacious design now let's get into some of the additions or new things that have now been added to the samsung galaxy tab 6 via android 10. so if we go into settings we're going to drop down to display and in display we get better control of dark mode up here with dark mode settings you can set it to a schedule or just have it uniformly across all available apps including google's apps you also have the navigation bar has now changed so now you can go full screen gestures in google's version or you can go uh samsung's version by going into here and then well yeah right there <laughs> you can swipe up from either corner and then if you have hints on that's how you get the little t uh, bar to pop up there or those three bars will pop up there as you guys can see down here i do have my bar and that allows for, you know, quick changes uh, or quick, you know, app changes. I can't even think of the official term right now, but that's what you can do there if you have gestures turned on. And then, of course, you do that. And it's very clean. As you guys can see, the animations look very clean. You know, it's like they, you know, zoom in like a little circle. And then if you click on it, it'll expand back just like that. Um, and then, of course, if you want to swipe away, it goes away just like that so animations have also been finely tuned with this now within the display i showed you guys the navigation bar nothing's changed in terms of like the home screen layout everything's still the same there this is where you can come and swipe down for your notification panel nothing has changed there but what else has changed is oh the ability for your back button that was in uh, navigation bar so now you can go back from either side and then adjust your sensitivity your back sensitivity so let me show you guys that 
right down well okay you block gestures with the s pen if you really want to do that too and then in here your back gesture sensitivity so when you're swiping back you can actually adjust that if you want to now to go back out go down to biometrics and security this is where uh you will see the biometric security patch up here and as i mentioned the google play system updates you can manually check your security updates your google system play updates and software updates but of course that's in another location what has also been added to android 10 and to this tablet is privacy control so now you can come in here check your permissions you can come in here and check you know your privacy via your, your your the websites you use now of course i use samsung's browser which is tied to my samsung account so i can have better control there your customization services your autofill your activity controls what google can say for you or what you don't want them to save your personalization into ads and you can even check your google location history and 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 control that as well so that's something that has been much more streamlined with android 10 it wasn't as easily if not accessible uh useful prior to android 10 now you are getting even more control over what gets presented to you what else can you also check well if we come into advanced features here the s pen has an ability now to actually start an app by just holding the button now i have found it before and i lost it just like that <laughs> but yeah so if i want you got screen unlock oh air actions so in air actions i have lightroom because I do a lot of editing of pictures on here and really video editing, so I could have did my video editor as well. But for me, if I just hold the power button, it'll launch Lightroom just like that. And as you guys see, it moves a lot more faster and a lot more fluid. So if we go back, and, and then of course in here, you can check all your app actions with the S Pen with apps that have available actions. So if we go back some more, of course, routines has been updated a little bit more. I talked about Samsung Dex that has been updated a little more. The multi-window app tray now has a permanent spot here on the side. That is something I don't like. I wish that this could be more transparent or invisible, kind of like the edge panel on the Galaxy S20 series. So if you swipe over, it's more fluid now, much more smooth before it jittered at first and then it would swipe you know, smooth after the first try, but here it swipes a whole lot better. So here you can actually take whatever app that you want to. And if you click on it, it'll bring it up just like that. And just like that, you have <laughs> your, your multi window tray. And if you want to switch out YouTube or the right app, if so, let's say you didn't want to switch out YouTube, you want to keep YouTube, but you want to leave settings. You click the middle, you swap apps, and then you come over here and you click on a new app and it'll replace it. So multitasking on the Tab S6 has been much, much more refined on this tablet because being able to multitask either wasn't that easy or it felt you know, very jittery and now it's very smooth. And if you don't want to keep this, then you just hit boom and you leave that up. But let's say you wanted to actually drag an app to a side. Well, you can also do that too by just taking the app and dragging it to either side or you can have it as a free flow window like that and then if you want to add something else you know bring the calendar back up boom so now you got three apps still and do whatever you want to do in terms of multitasking and i find that to be very very useful because sometimes you are doing multiple things you don't want to have to jump in samsung decks unless you're already in samsung decks working and you can still have a very nice flow of multitasking taking on and with the window app tray let's say you don't care for those apps and you come down here click on this and it expands that so now you can choose from a bunch of apps that al allow for multi-window or free flow and then just drag and drop so you know you want to take youtube music boom as you guys can see wow and it's fixed just like that and i like that now youtube music has I don't think it did before, but it has a tablet form. So if I was to maybe drag, oh, you can't do that. Mm, I don't like that right there. Whoops. 
let's try expand it. Oh, okay, cool. So if you expand it, it'll go to the right side as well. Oh, that's nice. So that's something I just realized myself. <laughs> so if you want to have your little music player window, you know, free flowing while you're working in two apps, or even if you're on one app and you don't want it to have its own space and you just want to have it free flowing and control your music that way, boom. And as you guys can see, you can minimize the app. So I actually like that. And then this will actually, you know, add the pair to your home screen. So if you always want the same two apps to be multitask, just click that button right there and it'll take both apps and pin them to your home screen or somewhere on your home screen, one of your home screen tabs. So I find that to be very useful. Let's see, let's go back to settings. And yeah, that's that. Now, oh, that was accessibility. We're almost there, I think. Digital well-being has been updated. Now you have more control over apps that you want to, you know, be, uh, allow to be, you know, basically disabled to in, in, in focus mode, right? And then, you know, of course, it keeps track of your unlocks, your app timers, screen time. You know, you can just add other things in here. You know, wind down, you know, grayscales, apps, and all that type of stuff, blocks, notifications. Parental controls is a big deal because now parents can have more control over their kids' devices. So if they want them to concentrate on homework or more family time and get off their electronic device, you have those controls right there. And if we go back, device care has been updated as well. Has that more clean look just like the Galaxy S20 series. And if you come up here and click on advanced, you can actually schedule an auto restart. You can actually check on <clears throat> your optimization and when you want apps to close it in the background. And of course you can lock apps still in here. You can still lock apps. So for me, I still have my, I have my internet locked and I thought I had power direct. Oh, it's not locked anymore, but I had it locked. So, you know, apps that you don't necessarily want to clear your RAM or, you know, be cleared, you can lock those so that way the system knows to leave those running in the background because you, you might have something going on and you want that app to stay focused on that and not leave so that's some nice stuff there back in here if we go into battery you can check your power modes uh, which is really just three I wish they had a high performance mode like they do on their phones which is interesting that they don't have that on the tablet I'm a little shocked but you can, you know, adapt the power saving basically it charges it to 85. Is that 85? No, adapt the power saving, adjust power to what you need. And I accidentally experimented with that on the Galaxy S20. And for some reason, it kept docking my phone down to medium power saving. But for me, I want power at all times. So I just leave it running like that. Here you get medium and maximum power saving. But I have it just optimized to get balanced right now. Um, I wish they had I have performance where nothing was necessarily limited because I do a lot of work on my tablet. I, I would benefit the most if there was some high performance mode on here. Charging, you can have fast charging on. This is where you can protect your battery and have it only charge at 85%, even though it will still show 100%. So that's a way to, you know, preserve your battery and extend it. And then, yeah, you come into storage. Now, there's not too much you can do in storage. You know, it says advanced, but it really just shows you the storage. You can click on it and then maybe try to do cleaning. I'm surprised that I have 96.3 gigs used on this tablet because I don't really have anything saved on here. So I might have to do a factory reset and just start from scratch, maybe. But with the Tablet 7 Plus coming out soon, you know, it, it'll be fine. And then, you know, of course, the memory coming here. And I do like how it looks like this. It looks a lot more clean, more fleshed out. And then, of course, you can come in here and clean stuff out if you really want to. And then you can ex exclude apps from being clean. So it's almost similar to when your phone or when your device or in this case, your tablet optimizes in the morning and, you know, wipes out certain background processes. You can limit what actually gets processed out. And then the biggest thing, or I won't say the biggest thing, but in accessibility, in terms of, I believe it's in hearing, you have live transcribe. So you can listen to live speech and display it as text. You have to download Google's app for that to take place. But once you do, you know, it'll take you to actually download. Once you do, you can have it on, you can set, you know, for settings and all that type of stuff. So, and Google processes your conversations, but never stores them. So that's nice. I wish they had the live captions feature as well. You know, you can have cap, you can turn on captions in YouTube and whatnot, or, you know, hopefully your video source allows you to turn on captions, but it would be cool if live captions took place and automatically did it when the volume was off. 
because that's one of the things I do like about Google's devices is that, or at least the Pixel 4, is that like if I have the volume off, it'll automatically caption what's being said in a video for me. And so that's something that I actually really, really like. So hopefully they'll, they'll bring that to here one day. And that's pretty much it in terms of like big changes. It's just been refined, a refined software experience, some additional uh, software uh, additions that we've gotten in this S20. And that's one thing that I hope that they improve on as time moves forward, maybe with the One UI 2.5, we'll see. But, you know, even though, it, it, I mean, it's a tablet, but make sure apps are more, more apps are, are available for tablet use. And then even for Samsung themselves, make sure their apps are more tablet optimized and not just like a like a bigger version of the mobile, like the phone app. Because, you know, a lot of us do like to use the tablet for work and we would appreciate having, you know, useful apps or more useful accessibility options when working with specific apps. And so that's something I hope that will get better going forward. But if you haven't already downloaded the Android 10 update for your tablet, go ahead and download it. You will enjoy it. You will appreciate it. It is the, the app feels fat or the app, the tablet feels faster. Everything feels so much more smooth. And I've been running Android 10 for since the 29th. I think it's when it actually went live for T-Mobile. It was June 29th, I think. So since then, I've been running it and haven't had any issues. Well, no, I did have two issues, but they got cleared up over time. And whenever you, uh, like, let's see if I swipe over to Samsung Daily, which has also been changed to Samsung Daily. It used to be like the Bixby board or whatever, but now it's Samsung Daily. Or, yeah, something Bixby, something. So let's say you come in here, you go to settings, and then you say about Samsung daily. A lot of times Samsung apps will let you know you can update it if there's an update available. Well, in this case with this app and with the home screen or the home, you know, the, 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 the OS, uh, I guess you could call it the home screen, they'll have updates that pop up. Well, both apps, the home screen and Samsung daily, whenever you click update, it wasn't in the Galaxy store to actually update. So it would kind of just crash you know, Samsung, uh, the Samsung Galaxy store. So those have been resolved and I don't know if it, it was just a slight hiccup with Android 10 kind of fleshing itself out throughout the tablet, but that stuff has been resolved. I haven't had any issues with that, but I did just want to point those two little small things that I had an issue with. But outside of that, I haven't had any issues. Everything's been running just fine and I've been enjoying it a whole lot more so again if you haven't already download the app if it's available or the uh, software update if it's available for your tablet let me know down in the comments below if you have if you enjoyed it if there's things missing which one do you have one ui 2.0 one ui 2.1 uh and yeah let the, the, let the discussion begin down in the comments but if you haven't already make sure you guys ignite that like button subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you guys hit that notification bell so that way you stay informed when I drop videos. But your boy Versal is signing out. And until the next video, wait for it.